He was a legend in radio. And while he never really claimed his legendary title, Patrick Ellis was indeed an on-air giant. His career spanned over four decades at the same radio station, WHUR 96.3 FM. And he reigned king on the Sunday morning airwaves from 1979 until his passing, July 16th, 2020. Welcome to our special presentation of Patrick Ellis, Beyond the Mic, a celebration of life and legacy. Hi, I'm Molette Green, and I am honored to not only have known Patrick as a colleague, but a dear friend. Over the next hour, we will hear from those who knew him best, as well as several tributes from notable figures from within the gospel community. Patrick was a husband, father, grandfather, uncle, brother-in-law, community leader, mentor to many, beloved colleague, and friend. Jesse Fax and Patrick attended elementary school together and met up again as colleagues at WHUR. As the program director, Fax was in charge of hiring all of the on-air talent, launching many careers, including Patrick's. I asked him, would he like to... um be the host of our gospel show. I told him it was from uh, 6 to 10 on Sunday mornings. And um, I think he thought about it for maybe a a day or so. And um, I I asked him again and he agreed to do it. And I was very happy that that he agreed. I had no idea that he was gonna last for for, um, 40 some years. But even before Patrick hit the airwaves, he carved out a career behind the microphone. Jim Watkins helped to build the studios of WHUR and would later become WHUR's general manager. Patrick uh, was a member of the nation at the time. And I remember when I first met him, I was definitely afraid of him because I had never met anyone from the nation. He seemed to be very intimidating and very, very serious. But what I found out very, very fast was that he was really a gentle, fun guy. Jesse explains what made Patrick the perfect guy to host a gospel radio show. He was very personable. He was likable. He was very intelligent. And um, the main thing that I um, liked in him was I knew he would be um, receptive to um, listener requests. And uh, that was a, that's a big part of, of being a radio announcer is um, you have to answer the phone calls and uh, you have to be uh, receptive to the listeners. And it became an instant love affair. Patrick loved his listeners and they loved him right back from day one. You've been listening to Gospel Spirit on 96.3 HUR with me, Patrick Ellis. I want to personally thank you for listening this Sunday and hope you have a blessed rest of your day. Up next is Rankin Chapel, followed by The Journey, then Jackie Gale's Web. Enjoy your day and stay tuned to 96.3 HUR, Sounds Like Washington. I listened to Brother Patrick for many years, starting as a teenager. And I would send uh, email um, remembrances, birthday notes to about my parents and wasn't quite sure if they would be uh, read over the the uh, airways, but each t- and every time uh, Brother Patrick read them with such kindness and care, and I am truly going to miss his voice on Sunday. His voice was so calming, regardless of what you were going through, or regardless of how how tough your week may have been. When you listen to him speak, it just calmed everything. And I loved that about him. Patrick's Sunday Morning Gospel show was so successful, it was expanded and aired from 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. He would later change the name to Gospel Spirit. Even in his early career, Patrick was a force to be reckoned with, helping not only to build his own brand, but helping others along the way. Current WHUR radio personality Angela Stribling met Patrick as a budding radio announcer. She was one of the voices behind the original Quiet Storm, which started at WHUR. Her friendship with Patrick 
dates back more than 30 years as they both made their mark in radio. Even as Patrick's success began to climb, he never wavered. Patrick was one of those guys who, he was always generous, even when, you know, he was a lot younger and trying to make a name for himself. He always found the time to talk to people. So I, I'm here to say Patrick never changed. And putting what started out as his childhood buddy turned lifelong friend on the air is a decision facts will cherish forever. Easily, um, my proudest achievement was um, um, Patrick accepting the position of uh, host of the gospel program. Hey, beautiful people, this is Kirk Franklin. Please forgive my time in the studio. I've been working all day, but I had to stop because it is too important that I can't miss this moment to be able to just um, give my condolences to the family and friends of Patrick Ellis. I mean, just the 40 years of what he's done for the community and what he's done for the genre and what he and what he's done for all of us in gospel music. I just want to say uh, I'm so sorry for the loss and I am uh, eternally grateful for his contribution in my life and to the lives of so many other artists we really appreciate uh, his legacy and we will continue to walk life out with you thank you so much and god bless you patrick was a native washingtonian he was in fact born in the same building where he would later go to college and work he loved to share the story of freedman's hospital where whur is located Patrick attended D.C. public schools before heading to a private boarding school in Connecticut. He returned to his beloved city after graduating to attend Howard University, majoring in communications. His love for family never kept him far away from home too long. Susan Cooper and Adina Ellis Cato are Patrick's daughters. He was um, incredibly connected to to family. Um, being, being around his family, celebrating um, special occasions, even celebrating just, you know, just day-to-day achievements um, and just day-to-day, you know, living um, experiences with his family was very important. He really loved family. He loved family. He loved his family. He loved gathering with his family. Um, He loved entertaining us. You know, he always loved when any of us, um, you know, would say that we were coming down to the beach house to spend the night. And um, and he was there for all the births of his grandchildren, um, including my son Cassius. The love of family and tradition was instilled in Patrick early on by his parents, the son of an educator and children's store owner. Patrick put family first even as his career demanded more. Eldest daughter Susan says her dad wore many hats. Funny, stern, a disciplinarian. Um, his, um, and the, the sternness um, in terms of um, discipline, um, I never thought about it, but now that you've asked that question, I would, I would attribute that to his mother, my grandmother, because she was a school teacher, um, and she was a she was a school teacher in D.C. public schools, um, you know, and she was from that generation where you know discipline was um, it was it was a must. <laughs> but even when Patrick had to put you in check, there was a double dose of conversation. Known to be a talker, daughter Adina says her dad was a man of detail and very meticulous about everything, especially when it came to the holidays. When he would call me in early to mid fall with the questions about Christmas and Christmas gifts, it would stress me out a little bit, but it was just kind of funny to to watch because he obviously was really, really into it and he wanted to make sure that everybody got exactly what they wanted and that the way in which those gifts were presented was just perfect. Um, I don't know if anyone in the family has outdone him in this particular area because he was very, very meticulous about it and very serious about it. Um, But it was actually fun to watch just how much he would get into this whole act of giving for his family. That sentiment was echoed by his niece and nephew. My Uncle Patrick, there's no, you can't describe him in one word. He was intelligent. He was informative. He was generous. He was loving. 
caring, sarcastic. I, everyone can tell you that he had, his humor was very dry, <laughs> but it was funny. Like anyone could tell you, you you're going to laugh if you're around him. At every family event, he was always um, available to talk and to, to make sure that uh, people were doing well and see if there's anything that he could do to uh, help us in our careers or in our pursuits. And that hand of help was a key part of Patrick's DNA. He relished in being there for all. Whether you were an up and coming artist or a student, he didn't mind sharing his gifts and talents with others. Patrick Ellis was my friend. One of the most kind, caring, supportive human beings I have ever known. He was a bright light in my life and a bright light to people all across this world. God gifted him with a beautiful, sonorous, unique voice, a voice we have been listening to for over 40 years. I loved him and I'm going to miss him. Maranatha, my brother, Jesus is coming soon. See you in the morning. Meeting Patrick is like gaining a lifelong friend, if you so desired. Early in his career, Patrick led WHUR's internship program. His list of students and mentees, turned forever friends, was vast. Howard University professor Cheryl Johnson knows that side of Patrick well. She was a high school student when she began volunteering on Patrick's show. He mentored me for 39 years. Through my career at Howard as a student, followed me to New York when I worked at the networks in the ad agency, back to the Washington DC area and Washington media, radio, television, Washington Post, where I met um, my sister, Angela Green Ellis, who I later introduced them and they married for 20 years, the love of his life. And um, he just reached back and gave to all of us. The Reverend Emmett Young is also among the Patrick mentees. He's now the pastor of Loyal Baptist Church and he has his own radio show in Virginia. I've known Patrick ever since I was 17 years old. Uh, we started Preacher Boy, I uh, was about uh, 22, 23. And so we'd already had that, you know, five or so years working together. And uh, when we did start working together, I was really kind of uh, in awe. I mean, just seeing Patrick do what he uh, do what he did every single day and then to be a part of the show, it was something that was pretty massive uh, for me, but it was fun. And Patrick always challenged you, you know, because he wanted excellence. And so, you know, you had to be excellent. And just as Patrick provided those stern talks to his own daughters, he had no problem giving it the same way to those he mentored. Just ask Yasmeen Arrington, who now runs her own nonprofit helping youth. Yasmeen cherishes those Patrick learning lessons that helped her to grow. There were a few times where I was not exactly prompt. And Patrick, you know, he would always, he would go, I I would stand outside and I'd wave, I'd wave at him uh, uh, as he was in the studio. He'd look at me and he'd come out and open the the door uh, and he'd just kind of give me a, give me a look, give me a face like, you know, you know, you're late. And I'd be like, good morning, Patrick. You know, I'd be acting all like, acting like I didn't know I was late. Uh, He, he was, he was strict. He, he was, he was. Uh, stern and if I made a mistake you know he would he would immediately correct me I made a mistake in the studio and he was very uh, particular about and he took pride in being um, a DJ in uh, and he considered his music uh, playing the gospel music in the morning not simply as a job uh, but literally, as, it was his life. You know, he lived and breathed it. it. It was a ministry for Patrick. Patrick Ellis, he challenged me 17. He challenged me at 22. He challenged me all throughout my career. Um, and like I said, I'm the better for it. Um, he was one who we shared together. We ate together. Um, and he taught me so much that I'm living right now. And I, I'm grateful. I thank God, you know, for his life and for his legacy. And I do what I do now, you know, to make him proud. Love you, Patrick. I am Joyce Garrett, 
Director of Music and Worship Arts at the Alfred Street Baptist Church in Alexandria, Virginia, pastored by the Reverend Dr. Howard John Wesley. Our whole congregation is very honored to present Total Praise, written by Washington's legendary gospel composer, Richard Smallwood, in tribute to Patrick Ellis, a rock in the gospel community.
Hi, this is Richard Smallwood. Um, to the family of Patrick Ellis, I wanted to extend my condolences, my love, and let you know that you are in my prayers. Um, Patrick was a legend in the DMV. Uh, he helped make WHUR what it is today. Um, so many people listened to him uh, during those early morning hours while they were getting ready uh, for church or on the car radio on the way to church. I know I did. And I thank him for the way he supported the DMV artist. Um, he always supported me, and, and I so appreciate that. Uh, God bless you guys. Um, know that uh, he will be remembered. He will be remembered well and fondly as being a trailblazer, someone who made a difference in the DMV. God bless you. Patrick had a heart for those in need. He loved working in the community to address issues like hunger, domestic violence, homelessness, and substance abuse. One of his award-winning projects happened during the height of the crack cocaine epidemic in DC. Karen Campbell, former WHUR Community Affairs Director, worked alongside Patrick on many of those initiatives. She says he always took each project a step further. When we did the Border Baby Thon for Howard University Hospital and raised uh, about over, over well over $100,000, probably over $150,000 for, um, for those babies to get a new home that had been abandoned in a hospital by drug addicted mothers. Patrick always took it a step further um, and he always pushed me to take it a step further. So we developed that home, but you know, one thing I remember is him actually going into the house and um, sitting in the rocking chair and holding one of those babies. And that's when I knew we had come full circle, that it, this was not just a project or a radio fundraiser for him, but he really wanted um, to improve their quality of life. Uh, and so when I think about those types of experiences, no matter what we did, no matter what we did, he insisted that we raise the bar, not just because of his love of radio, um, but because of his love of this community um, that had nurtured him so much. And Patrick took that nurturing as his way to pay it forward. Dr. Denise McCain runs the Family Justice Center of Prince George's County. She met Patrick back in 2003 as he led the radio station's effort to renovate a facility for victims of domestic violence. He called the project, Give Me Shelter. There's only one shelter in Prince George's County and that had a capacity of 23 beds. So you can imagine um, when we're talking about thousands of women who are calling, uh, who are fleeing abusive homes with nowhere to go, we needed more bed space. So just by virtue of hosting and, and sponsoring this Radiothon, uh, we raised almost $800,000. So as a result of that, today, the Prince George's County Family Crisis Center has a shelter with 48 beds. So it went from 23 to 48, more than doubled almost. So that was really something that made an impact in the community. Uh, we are now able to house more women and children as a result of the efforts of the Family Crisis Center. And I should say, moreover, Give Me Shelter and, and Patrick Ellis. While Patrick took pride in everything he did, there was one annual event that gave him the greatest joy. It was feeding families in need during the Thanksgiving holiday season through food to feed. He was able to put his life into the life of others. And that's what he, that was his intent. That was his life, serving others. He understood that through serving others that he would, he would gain strength and power for his own life. And, he fed off of that. I mean, he just loved serving, and and particularly those who were left out. And I, I think why Patrick was so significant to me and others, um, as they as you watched him work in the community, um, he didn't put himself out there. He wanted to stay behind the scenes, working and creating and and, and helping others. 
and I think that was his, the genius of, of uh, and the heart of Patrick Ellis. He, he really was not seeking glory for himself. He wanted to serve. He truly had a heart to serve. Patrick's genuine concern for the community created a strong bond with churches, nonprofits, colleagues, as well as listeners. We're all going to miss him. We all salute his excellent work and his wonderful spirit. Patrick Ellis's life and his work made an indelible imprint on us, and his legacy will live on. This is Pastor John K. Jenkins, Sr. of the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden. Now, I wanted to take a moment and extend our thanks to God for the life and ministry of Patrick Ellis. For as long as I can remember, for as long as my mind can go back, our Sunday mornings on WHUR 96.3 has been the voice of Patrick Ellis. Thank God for his life, his ministry, and the music that he played and the words that he shared and that voice that we heard every Sunday morning over the airway. We thank God for his life. To his family and to the WHR family, we extend our condolences and our love. Thank God for Patrick Ellis. Revelation 19 and 1 says that to all these things I heard a loud voice of a great multitude crying out, Hallelujah, salvation and glory, honor and power belongs to our God. Come on, worship with us for a minute. and glory honor and power unto the Lord our God for the Lord our God is mighty yes the Lord our God is omnipotent the Lord our God he is one
Patrick hosted his wildly popular Gospel Spirit Sunday show for 41 years on WHUR, making him by far the longest-running radio personality on air in the DMV. WHUR's current general manager, Sean Plater, explains how significant Patrick was to the WHUR family. What Patrick did in D.C. is just remarkable. To, to have a show to run for 40 years, and I mean not just airing, but this show was number one, and, and it's still number one to this day. Um, that That is just remarkable and unheard of in any radio uh, market or um, for any radio show to go that long and be that consistent. Um, but it's because of who Patrick was. that The genuineness of Patrick flowed through his heart and it flowed through the airwaves of WHUR every Sunday. Watkins says while Patrick was well aware of his popularity, he remained humbled. Patrick was not the kind of guy to kind of let it go to his head. I mean, he, he, he took it in his stride. And many times when I was with Patrick and people would, would oogle all over him, he was just very cool, you know, thank you very much. And he just kind of keep on going. And I always admired him for that because with the ratings that he had and the kind of revenue he was bringing to the station and with all the fame, he could have been completely different, but he wasn't. I did have to get used to like throughout my life, like have, I had to get used to other people's excitement about him and who he was because obviously to me like he was just my dad. Jackie Gale's Webb's afternoon gospel show followed Patrick's gospel spirit. For 30 years I had the pleasure to uh, compliment the morning Sunday morning gospel spirit program so eloquently uh, hosted by Patrick Ellis with my Sunday afternoon gospel pro program and it was uh, quite quite an honor and uh, I I never took it for granted that when Patrick was ill and that was rare or when he took vacation that he trusted me with his audience and his program to fill in for him because he took his work so so very seriously uh, and he understood that I respected his program and his audience and that's a memory that I will always cherish. Patrick left his mark on WHUR, leaving a lasting memory. Patrick was an absolute joy. Uh, just to see him in the hallways, he every time I saw him, that, it just brought a smile to my face to be able to have uh, conversations with Patrick, not just about things that were currently happening, but we would take time and talk about the past and talk about you know how things were in the 70s and the 80s and how HUR became what it is today. And so that's helped me um, as a general manager now to have a better appreciation for that, not only as somebody that grew up in this market, but also as that history and that rich legacy that we carry on, you know, 49 going into 50 years later. Patrick is irreplaceable. I've never met anyone like Patrick in my life. I'm honored to call him a co-worker, but more importantly, a friend. He gave me the opportunity to help him realize his dreams. And he was a great servant of WHUR. And a lot of our success that we've had as a radio station was because of the work that Patrick Ellis did behind the scenes that people would never know. Patrick loved radio so much that when it came time for he and his wife to build their forever home on the Chesapeake Bay, he built a studio in the house. Jim Watkins helped him to make his lifelong dream come true. When I got the message he had passed, I was saddened for a moment because I had momentary sadness because I, I knew that my friend had gone and second that he had been waiting for this home. But ha ha, you're right, Renee Nash, that he was able to see that dream come to reality. He was able to not only build it, to live in it, but also to manifest pro projecting and providing his message from his home studio for three Sundays in a row. What a blessing that he got to see his dream come true. To the family of Patrick Ellis, my name is Pastor Shirley Caesar, and I just call to just tell you that in spite of everything, that we love you 
and we appreciate the legacy and the life of Patrick who had the number one uh, Sunday morning gospel show there since 1979. Many of you probably would have never heard of me had it not been for Patrick playing my CDs along with uh, the caravans and I could the mighty clouds of joy and so forth and so on. So I just want to say to the family that we love you. We are praying for you. I know that you miss him. Been there. Been there. Glory to God. I know what it is to see my loved ones one by one die and leave me. I'm the last of 13 children. And so I want you to just look and live knowing that things are going to get better. God's going to wipe every tear away and the pain is going to become less every day. God bless you in Jesus' name. The Bible says in Lamentations 3 and 21 that it's because of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. Because His compassions for us fail not. They are new every single morning. Wherever you are, I need you to encourage yourself to know that God is with us. His mercy is with us. His grace is in us. Come on and sing this worship with us as we honor the Lord for His wonderful works. Come on choir. The steadfast love of the Lord. You got it. together again. Come on, let's sing. Everybody. You got it. Oh, his mercy. We give him praise for his mercy. They never come. Never come. Following a brief illness, Patrick left us on Thursday, July 16th. Sadly, he died at a Maryland hospital due to complications from the coronavirus. We and, I mean, the, the hospital and Patrick put up a great fight, but uh, um, the overwhelming uh, pneumonia, the overwhelming 
lung failure uh, just took him from us. And I, I want to again use this opportunity to emphasize to people the importance of uh, preventing this disease from being given to older people um, and to, un to understand that even younger people can get very ill from it as well. As much as we will forever miss our Patrick, his life and legacy live on. He left us with many fond memories and lessons, but his passing also provides us with some valuable messages. I think that the lesson that we have to learn now is that it is a testimony to our sense of our shared humanity. Do we believe any longer that we are just living lives independent of anyone else? We can do whatever I want to do and I could care less about the consequences that my behavior has for someone else? Or do we live in a society where moral human beings understand that we are intimately connected one to another and that what I do can affect what happens to you and your ability to survive? And the actions we can all take in Patrick's memory are simple, serve others and help to stop the spread of the coronavirus. We know that masks work. We know that social distancing works. And we know that frequent hand washing works. Anybody that would try to convince you otherwise is deliberately trying to engineer your demise and those with whom you are associated. Do not fall for white supremacist racist tactics. On Saturday, July 25th, a private funeral service was held for Patrick Ellis which included a public procession down Georgia Avenue, Northwest DC, where he made a final stop at the WHUR studios before heading to his final resting place. Hundreds of listeners and colleagues lined the street to say goodbye and honor a life well lived. When it is safe to do so, Patrick's family plans to hold a public memorial celebration of his life Patrick Connery Ellis was 77 years old. Patrick Ellis, gone, but never forgotten. Good morning, DC, Maryland, and Virginia. Patrick Ellis here. We got the best in gospel music coming to you this blessed Sunday morning. Listen to me until 11, and then check out hur.com for the latest on the coronavirus. you told me to do well you told me to walk and I done that too I done done what you told me to do oh well you told me to talk and I done that too I done done what you told me to do I said whoa I done done You told me to do oh, well you told me to march and I done that too I done done what you told me to do oh well you told me to fight and I done that too I done done what you told me to do I said oh I done done oh I done done What 
you told me to do I said oh, I done done what you told me to do I said oh, I done done what you told me to do